it is stupidly fast. The instant torque pretty much allows you to stand the rear end out. You guys remember JFK's speech, anybody? <laughs> hey folks, today's video is brought to you by Masterworks. It's the new platform that allows you to buy shares of blue chip premium artwork. Now, folks like us might not ever be able to afford a $20 million Andy Warhol or a $50 million Basquiat or a Rembrandt or any of that stuff that the billionaires are buying, right? Because billionaires have 10 to 30% of their net worth sometimes in fine art. Why? Because it returns better than the stock market in a lot of cases. It's a limited resource with known provenance, right? And you can get in on that action by buying shares of blue chip artwork through the Masterworks platform. The last time we talked about Masterworks, we said the first two people to sign up would be getting a free carbon fiber helmet signed by Zach and myself. And I'd like to congratulate our two winners, Nicholas Senkowski of Watertown, Connecticut, and Adam Trebsch of Auburn, California. We will be getting your helmets to you soon. So thanks to Masterworks for sponsoring today's video and get in on that by downloading the app using the link in our video description today. Morning, everybody. Uh, beautiful day up here. This is going to be a little bit uh, longer video than normal because we are going to take the Rivian R1T up and down the canyon and then up a mountain off-road in one video. Very exciting car, uh, truck, whatever you want to call it, EV, uh, made in America. Very cool. Uh, it's been uh, it's been out for just a minute. There's only a couple thousand of them in, in customer hands mm -hmm. so far. Um, but uh, this is a, an early production one, uh, VIN number 941, the launch edition. Um, and it's really, really interesting. There's a lot to go over. But bottom line, in this video, we're going to answer a few questions. Um, is this thing all the hype has made it up to be? Uh, should you pay the new price of $91,000 for one? Uh, how does it compare to other high-end luxury EVs? And lastly, are we really saving the planet with stuff like this? <laughs> so, uh, the, uh, the boilerplate items, uh, and there are a lot, so bear with us. The R1T is a uh, four-door pickup truck. Okay, it's electric, it has four independent motors, uh, synchronous permanent magnet AC motors. Uh, it has a 128.9 kilowatt hour battery pack, okay, plus little flashlights in the door that are one kilowatt each. So you get 130 total. See, those give you an extra two little bits of range. They don't use the range, to. but it's a total battery thing, Got right? Uh, 835 combined horsepower, 908 pound-feet of torque, and of course you need it because this thing weighs 7,173 pounds. Those are big pounds. numbers. That's the same, basically the same exact torque as a Chevy 2500 Duramax. Right, and it's basically the same weight as a TRX. It's, it's it's heavy. But with way more horsepower. Way, with more power, and it's smaller, right? How, how big is it? Well, it's pretty long. It's only one inch shorter than a Jeep Gladiator, and that's a long, that's long. Big vehicle. Uh, yeah. But it's a half inch narrower than a standard body F-150. And it feels a little bit narrower. Up here, this cabin, uh, it feels about, what? I feel, I'd say it feels like average SUV. I, yeah. I know that in the F-150 we had, the center the center console was yeah. like twice as wide. It was big enough you could put a laptop on it. Right. And it was, you know, laptop size. Right. Um, it, it feels like a nice, comfortable uh, SUV. Let's call it um, Land Rover LR4 sized in here. Okay. I think is about, about what we're working with. Zero to 60, three seconds. <laughs> on the 22-inch wheels Crazy. and the Pirelli Scorpion Zero tires that this particular demo is equipped with. Some other folks tested it with the 20-inch wheels and the off-road tires, a couple tenths slower there. Um, and also you get better range with the 22-inch wheels and these tires than you do with the off-road tires. Quarter mile, 11.7 at 110 
miles an hour. <laughs> uh, yeah. Fully independent suspension, front and rear, uh, with air springs and the hydraulic uh, anti-roll control technology, just like they use in the McLaren 7 Series, yeah. but, but beefed up. Really, really cool stuff. The air suspension has six and a half inches of vertical height adjustment, depending on what drive mode you're in. Uh, it has vegan leather, which means plastic. It does feel pretty That's nice, clever. though. As far as vinyl goes, it's pretty good. And they've also got this uh, wood grain dash, nice metal accents. Um, in theory, you can tow 11,000 pounds, although your range would be reduced by half Significantly, if you do so. of, course, of course. And in theory, you can put 1,700 pounds in the bed. There are all kinds of interesting storage solutions, like the gear tunnel, the frunk, the... Uh, uh, the purse holder down here, your pass through back well, there, the, and there's that lock thing in the tr in the bed, which yeah. is super cool. Like you put one end of a cable lock into this little port, and then you run it through something like a dirt bike or a bicycle or whatever. Yeah, and then you go back into the bed, and then it locks, so you don't need to have a second locking system. That's right, really clever. The bed isn't super long, but the tailgate is load bearing, so not only can you sit on it, you could put a dirt bike or a snowmobile, you know, with the bed down, and it would be uh, able to yeah. hold that. That's sort of the thing. Uh, when you get in the truck, um, although there is a physical uh, key fob if you want it, you can start it with your phone. There's also a bracelet that you can use to lock and unlock it. Uh, there's no start button which is something I don't love. I'm told from Tesla people and others that it's the kind of thing you'd get used to uh, if you use it a lot, and that may be true, but to me, the start-stop button is not that much of an inconvenience, and walking away from a running vehicle, uh, not being certain when and where it will turn off right. is a stressor. Yeah, will it use the juice or not? Well, I was in here doing uh, interior <laughs> detail shots, and as I was sitting in here, all the lights dimmed, the screens turned off, and then the car locked itself. So yeah. I, I can attest that it does lock itself if you leave it. Uh, they take the key away for long enough. But I'm sure it does, Yeah, but it's a stressor. <laughs> it was stressor there's getting locked in the truck. Yeah, there are certain <laughs> things to me that, it, that don't need reinventing. Steering wheels and uh, on-off buttons. Those are okay the way they are. Having said that, you get in it, you press the brake pedal, it says ready on mm -hmm. the screen, uh, you put it in D. The, uh, the drive uh, shift selector is uh, familiar if you've ever been in a Mercedes or a Tesla that's not a Plaid. Right. Thankfully, it's a selector. It's not done through the screen. Yes. I'm really happy about Thankfully. that. Thankfully. And then you are ready to drive. Uh, we actually have to select our we drive mode. We select our mode, our height. There's a lot of things you could change here. And yes. And we'll talk about all the differences and how they feel because they do feel markedly different on the road. Right. So on, we'll start with uh, all-purpose mode, um, which is all-wheel drive, full power, uh, soft ride suspension and these middle ride height, and then uh, and then we'll go into sport and see how that affects. And we have regen on standard because there's standard and there's high. Right. There's so, no off. There's no light. No coasting mode. No coasting. Here we go. First thing you notice about this vehicle is that it is. Stupidly fast given its size and weight. The acceleration numbers do not lie. Okay, but that's standard with luxury EVs. They're all really fast. The next thing you notice about it is that the steering is ridiculously sharp. This is an unbelievable steering system. It has really good feedback, it is really good on center, it's very easy to point. It goes where you point it every time, and even if you start to get little hints of understeer, you can actually feel that through the wheel. The third thing that you feel is the ride quality. In this all-purpose mode with the suspension in the middle height adjustment, everything is working in a very optimized way. It's super, super smooth. Your contact patches are maintained. The ride really absorbs this kind of stuff. The springs are high enough that they're working, but not so high that they're overpressurized. And everything seems very, very luxurious. Well, what's amazing is with that hydraulic sway bar suspension system from McLaren, it, it has the same magic the 720 does. And I know that's not a reference everyone gets, but basically this truck, when we drove in the canyons yesterday, corners really, really flat, but 
because you're not using sway bars or really stiff springs, the wheels are still able to move around over like undulations and, and little variances right. in the road. So you get the best of both worlds, and that's how cars like the 720, this, and anything else with that suspension has this crazy compliant like front and back suspension, but the side to side roll is minimized, and it's it's really imp impressive, and incredible. And, and that is combined with the fact that we have no mechanical connection between the four motors. So you have infinite torque vectoring. You then have no mechanical sway bar connection. So you have infinite articulation combined with infinite torque vectoring. It gives you this unlimited amount of suspension compliance, grip, and, and power where you need right. it. It is really, really wild stuff. And it's an unbelievable application of that technology applied towards versatility and not purely, you know, supercar levels of performance. Right. So we're going to flip around. Because this is going to be an on and off-road video, uh, we're going to not go on and on and on and on and on about every little thing, but Zach will go up the hill and demonstrate for us the sport mode. The sport mode. Really good uh, door slam here. Like, it's a good... Good solid door thunk. The rain, the the door pulls themselves are straight up lifted from Range Rover. They're uh, nice. They they kind of half jokingly told me that like you like the Range Rover door pulls. Like they are actually Range Rover door pulls. Uh, so let's go to sport mode. So Select lower the to, ride height. Lower the ride height. The ride is lowering. Tss, tss, tss. So this thing will go down to at its lowest nine point six inches. And at the highest, 15 and a half inches. So it's uh, it's got it's got about six inches and in change of uh, of total. Of rank, yeah. So the lower you make it, the well, the, what we'll demonstrate is the stiffer it gets. You know, you're just dropping the spring. It's an air spring, but it it feels like you chopped the springs on something. <laughs> and there's just oh, there's a lot less room for the wheel to move, and it just feels a lot more rigid. You know, we I think we used it on the highway coming up here. Yeah. In eco mode, it also lowers it for drag. And it was really, it was bouncing around like you were on uh, driving a cup car on right. the 405. Right. Eco mode is good because it disconnects the rear motors, so they're coasters, and you drive in front wheel drive. And for highway driving, that seems totally like fine. totally fine, right? Except it also pairs it with the low suspension, which makes it ride like garbage. Yeah. So this road is reasonably smooth uh, as far as canyons go. Well, let's uh, let's start with a launch. Yeah, we're gonna catch that truck in front of us. It might turn off into okay. the uh, the film set on the right. We'll see. Drag launch, left foot brake, right foot gas. Head on headrest. Dump. Ah! <laughs> oh, it scrambles. Wow, it really does. <laughs> oh my God, it's so fast. It's yeah. I mean, especially for the weight. Now we're used to EVs being uh, quick off the line. I mean, that's that's what they do. But when you see a pickup truck, you really don't expect no. that level of, you know, performance. It right. looks it when you see it parked like it looks Ooh. like a like a hippie mobile, you know what I mean? It looks like an explorer sport track or something. Yeah, it kind of does. Uh, so this that was full regen brake. And so we you know, we took this for a drive in the canyons yesterday to get acclimated, and there's very few times that you actually have to use the brake pedal even when you're driving at of a quick canyon pace. Like That's so interesting. Oh, oh, oh. Full oh. bump stops because, yeah, yeah. So the lower suspension, you guys might be able to see our heads already bouncing around yeah. a little bit, even it's though it's fairly smooth. <laughs> and that will bring us to another question, uh, or another topic. When the road was really bumpy yesterday in the canyons, and we were in sport mode, you get this pogo effect where, oh, right there, there it was. So yep. the, the, the suspension throttle. bounces, uh, uh, uh. and then it bounces your foot on the throttle, and the throttle's so sensitive, you end up pogoing both up and down and fore and aft. Yeah. And uh, that's when we learn that the sport ride is only meant for the smoothest of places. Oh, it is a self-reinforcing cycle, isn't it? It is. A little break there. The regen in standard mode driving around the city is strong enough that unless you're in an emergency situation, you never need to use the brake pedal ever. Yeah, it's really strong. Right. So if you're like my wife, my wife turns off the regen in our Ford. She does not 
not like driving with regen. I like driving with regen. So you have to like driving with regen to drive this because you cannot deactivate it. Look at the grip. Uh, the grip, the, the grip, grip is crazy. Is amazing. The steering accuracy is really impressive. The rack speed is absolutely perfect. I, and I would say, I mean, the feedback is pretty good. It's not amazing, but the the steering from on center is really quick. It's just they did such a good job. And then the cornering speed and the agility is so impressive. And for I think the it, weight, the agility is insane. Yeah, I mean, it has the it has the agility of like like the M240i, which weighs what 3,800 pounds. I mean, that's I mean, generous, but I would say at <laughs> see there at it is the again. very least, the agility matches like the Range Rover SVR, the Sport oh, SVR. Yeah, it, you know, I, I think it feels really really light. And then, sport, see, the, the, yo, the sport throttle stinks. It's really, yeah, it's no good. <laughs> it's but that was good. all region. I mean, it's really amazing that you don't need to use the binder. Let's go back to. Um, We're gonna go back to all purpose, with brake regen on high, and the ride on soft. Now just have a little go, and see what happens. And I bet it's much more pleasant. Oh, that was the diff engaging. Oh, maybe. That's you know one of the few sounds in this car is when you go to eco mode and you hear the diff like something disengages. Yeah, it those physically rear, yeah, those decouples rear motors those decouple. motors for maximum coasting. So it's actually here. better in all-purpose yeah. mode because it smooths things out. Absolutely. Yeah. But for I mean, if, if any decent sport luxury car had the manners that this has and the agility, yeah. we'd be impressed by it. The fact that it's a 7,000 pound plus pickup truck right. is crazy. It's really it's wild. Crazy. Yeah, it's really wild. And and um, it's almost like they've hired the Lotus guys on the DL to do the steering. The steering is the most impressive part of it yeah. dynamically. We expect it to be fast. Of course. Um, the regen being as aggressive as it is, is a pleasant surprise, but it's not defying expectations. It's just an interesting bit of programming. And when you have very powerful motors, you can get a very powerful regen, mm -hmm. right? That that makes sense. Um, I will say that the seats, um, you know, for not being uh, uh, sport Aggressive oriented, buckets. they hold you in pretty well. Yeah. They're really nicely uh, sculpted. Uh, they look cool. They, they have the right amount of firmness, but they're also, uh, they're soft and comfortable. Um, and, and in general, you know, this is a car for everything it's a one car solution to everything right yeah. sport everyday luxury and now as we should demonstrate off-roading because we are going to go take this from the mountain to the other side of the valley over there and drive it up a very steep trail mm -hmm. on 22 inch wheels uh making no other changes to the vehicle see you in a few one thing you uh, do notice uh especially if you're just cruising at a constant speed, is this car has a, a noticeable electric motor whine. Um, and there's no mode you can put it in to make that whine go away. It's not through the speakers. It's an actual uh, mechanical sound uh, from the motors. And if you don't have music on or a podcast or something, um, you hear it all the time. Whereas other EVs can run totally silent. That's a thing that I might not like over time. Dirt. Here's dirt. We are on dirt. Let's switch our modes. Off-road. Go off-road. And we'll just go with uh, rally. Rally mode is meant for driving fast on dirt trails and fire roads. But that's not really the mode I want here. I want it loose as a goose. So we're gonna go to drift mode with stability off. Oh boy, stiff suspension. Stiff suspension on this rocky road. Let's see how it does in off-road drift mode. Oh, there you go. It gets the back out. 
without an engine you do hear more from the tires lift turn brake uh huh but you can't go in rear wheel drive only so it's not like a regular Raptor where you can just run rear wheel drive and really get it super slidey accelerates like crazy on dirt though it's got very very good forward oh yeah there we go well if you stand on the throttle mid corner it will get slidey oh yeah there you go okay so you have to really power on oversteer but then yes it will do it <laughs> that's fun Well, folks, here we are, uh, Rauher off-road area. Uh, we're gonna do the Pioneer Trail, which if you've seen our off-road videos, we have done before. Uh, we choose this trail because to, in our opinion- Not because it is easy, but because it is hard. <laughs> we choose to go <laughs> Do you guys remember JFK's speech, anybody? Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. <laughs> anybody? We think that it is uh, just about the hardest trail that most folks would do in a stock SUV. And it shows uh, the capability of the vehicle, but it's not gnarly enough where we're gonna start breaking borrowed cars. Right. Um, couple things to note. On the way over here from the road drive, I tried to make a Bluetooth phone call and the, it, uh, it didn't connect properly. I could play music uh, and the person at the other end of the call could hear me, but I couldn't hear them. I doubt that is a systemic issue, but I bring it up because so far it's the only hiccup I've had in four days with the Rivian. So not a huge deal, something I'm gonna tell them about, um, but it's the only hiccup I've had, so I figured we should tell you. Uh, additionally, we dropped the tire pressure by 10 seconds a corner. Yeah. Not an official measurement, obviously. It would be very nice, considering the off-road and rugged nature of the Rivian. It's got an air compressor, for God's sake, but no onboard tire monitors. It also doesn't come with a old school tire pressure gauge yes. either, and despite having an air compressor. Before the people in the comments jump on us, specifically in the manual it says, do not use the compressor gauge as your tire pressure gauge. Right. Like it displays the pressure, but I think they're saying don't rely on that, so. So we took a swing, 10 seconds a corner, and in just the little transit over here, there was a noticeable difference between the stock 40 PSI and whatever minus 10 seconds a corner uh, is. Yeah, the ride smoothed out a lot. We're on the 22s, so yes. the ride would be even smoother if you got the smaller wheels. Right. So here we go. We're in uh, off-road auto, um, which is the highest, uh, not the highest, excuse me, the second highest suspension setting, soft, uh, and then standard regen. Because even though if you set the ride to soft, but you're in the highest setting because it's an air spring, it's packing more air into that spring to, to give it that height. Right. So it could be in the soft setting, but it's going to be a firmer ride than if you're at standard and soft. And the uh, Rivian people told me that you should only use the very highest setting uh, if you absolutely need it. If you have to clear an obstacle, if you have to get out of something deep, um, then by all means use it, but you shouldn't use the high setting as the default for just regular off-roading. Because there's no drive shafts, because there's no exhaust, because there's really a full skid tray under this car with very little mechanical under there, you don't need that super extra uh, space most of the time. Pretty impressive. Um, instant torque and silent off-roading, so far, Quite pleasant, yeah. I have to say, quite pleasant. What's uh, funny though is the end. There's no engine to hide the sounds of like suspension and tire. Right. So on the bumpy road up here, we're driving at some speed, and you just heard a lot more like suspension movement. You hear some clunk. Yeah. Now this little bit right here is one of the more challenging sections because there's a really deep hole. If I keep it to the right, it should be fine. Or not. Well, what tires are we on right now? Kind 22s, of an all season, right? All season tires. Right. 22s. I also have stability control is on. Let's turn off stability control. 
Rock Let's, crawl mode? Rock crawl mode. We're going to go to rock crawl mode. Keep foot on brakes okay. to remain to stop. Going up. We're going up in theory. We're going up. And we're going to go to our highest setting, 15 inches. Come on, baby. Up, up, up. Now, this is, a, this is actually a little tough little section, but we were able to do it and everything else. It does deteriorate and change, but uh, here we go. Rock crawl mode. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Woo! <laughs> okay, Big so, hole. good news. That was a question of modes. And we went from, rock, from uh, auto to rock crawl. And uh, problem solved. Yeah. Now, now we'll go back to regular high from highest. And it's it seems like uh, it's it will raise you more quickly when you stop. Yes. You know I think it's a power. We don't know if it's a power supply thing or a just what it's set to do uh, because if the spring is constantly getting you know um, like if the what tire is moving up and yeah. down and ranging then the pressure is ranging and it, it might not be able to figure out how much air to add to it. Right. The. Um, the ride, when you're set to high and uh, and regular off-road, is really nice, especially with the tires aired down. You're not getting too jarred or too banged around. It's very easy to modulate the power. I like the silent off-roading. It's cool. I think silent off-roading yeah. is excellent. I'm a fan. I like not having gears or differentials. I like not having to worry about anything underneath the truck getting damaged. The precise steering makes it very easy to place the wheels. Um, and then in theory, it should be, like the great thing about electric motors, especially having one at all four, all four corners, is it just has so much precision in how much torque it can send to that wheel mm -hmm. and the traction sensors. And the, the thing that ICE cars have been doing for a number of years, like torques all, you know, sensing all wheel drive, and then you had like brake vectoring, like all of those systems were trying to do what these electric systems do, which is control each wheel as perfectly as possible right. to maximize traction. And now you have that with, with this system. Tough section right up the middle. Shouldn't be too hard for this, but it's definitely, I'm not picking the easy lines like I might have in some other uh, other vehicles. So we've done this trail in like a G-Wagon, Land Cruiser, Defender, mm -hmm. Bronco Sport, just so people have some background on what we have successfully done it in. I don't know, have we, the only thing I can remember we were not able to summit it was the, the Outback Wilderness, we got to that first spot. I tried it in a Macan and there was like oh. no way. Wow, so this is pretty, pretty steep. This is an advanced line yeah. for a, a stock vehicle. This requires a, a good amount of articulation. Now, luckily, it's a pretty rocky area, so the all seasons tend to grip that well. If yeah. this was just dirt or sand, we'd probably be struggling a little bit more. But this thing is not having any trouble uh, just cruising right up the trail. The ride over this rocky stuff is nice. It's, there's not great visibility looking down right in front of the nose. Mm -hmm. And like, right now I can't see anything. I happen to know what's here. Ooh, that's okay. It's okay, we have a flat under trick. We go to the front facing camera. Oh, I forgot about our cameras. We have all the cameras. Good point. The cameras are not the highest def cameras I've seen on a lot of modern cars, like, you know, front view, rear view, whatever. They're fine, they're totally fine. But there is, uh, it, it looks kind of 480p? You know, maybe 720? 720, I think. But that helps, like right here, I can't really see the terrain underneath me. And so having that view is totally helpful. This is easy. This is an easy vehicle to go off-roading in. And it's comfortable, and it's easy to place the tires. Um, it's easy to manage the torque. Whatever, if it's struggling, it doesn't let you know that it's struggling. I'll take the, that right side seems like the hardest line. I'll take this middle line here. Yeah, we don't we don't want to pop a tire. There is a full size one. spare if we did, um, but I wouldn't want to have to back down this <laughs> to change it. <laughs> no. This is really nice. This is a I mean the versatility of this. Remember what we were doing an hour ago? Yeah. Like mobbing that canyon, and now we're just crawling 
really, really easily up this stuff. It's a really, really impressive vehicle. Let's see what our articulation's like. Yeah, here. we're gonna go up the center, the center thing here. Wow. Maybe we pick a wheel up there. Yeah. Front left flew, is probably off. Flew one there. We flew, flew one a little bit. But I'm gonna go right up the center. I'm not even gonna try to pick an easy line here. Right up the middle is a pretty. That's a pretty challenging line for a stock truck. And we're gonna go right up it. Boom, boom, boom. And underneath, I don't know if it's carbon fiber or wow. some sort of CRFP, wow, but it's like, it's, it's super flat and it looks like you could 50-50 grind something if you had to. Yes, proper skateboard stuff. Now, how about the brake over here? The breakovers like here? I don't know what's on the other side, but my camera does. No problem. Excellent. No yeah, that contact. Easy. That was easy. Here's another one. So I, it feels like the distance Ooh, a little oh. rub, but not. But from the steering wheel to the front bumper oh. Oh. is pretty big. Like when you said this truck was really long, when I got out and looked at it, the proportions don't look. That, it now doesn't look like a long bed you, because it's you got know? a long wheelbase right here. This seems like our our spot. This peak up here is going to be our U-turn and go down the go back down. And and we started this with what 170 range, I think 168. Uh, 168. Little... Yeah. Okay. So to get from the bottom of the hill to where we are right now is was 11 miles worth of range. We haven't even really mentioned range. Uh, from totally full, indicated 285 in normal mode, if you put it in eco mode or conserve mode, uh, that goes up to 315. Mm -hmm. So I, I think you're getting high twos in, in normal, uh, normal use. So we're going to flip around. Uh, what was that? Oh. Not even 11 minutes. Great. Nice. We're going to flip around and Zach is going to go down. All right. So to go down, we are in off. Oh, yeah. Look here. There's this. When you put it into off road mode, you can toggle hold on and off independently, which is nice. a good feature. Yeah. It's there if you want it, but you can also just toggle it off. And then if you need to roll back, you can just turn off yeah. and then go back. All right. Very helpful. So what's our region? Let's standard. Go, let's go, uh, go to high. Well, let's, we'll do standard for the first little ride. bit, and then we'll we change should, it. The ride is on stiff. We're going to make that. the ride soft. Ride soft. And okay. we're in rock crawl mode still. We are okay. in rock crawl, and we're going to go back to your cameras here. Down the hill. So I, what I'm interested to see is how well the regen works as a hill descent control. Right, because right. I don't know if this has an actual hill descent control. But right now, so I'm off brake, off gas. And we are rolling at four, five, six. So I it, mean, it's it does doing, do something. Definitely, because if, if we were in a normal, I don't know, that, that grade increased pretty significantly. Yeah. We, we should have been speeding up. So I don't know if it reads the slope and goes, well, we don't want you to go too fast here, mm -hmm. or if that's just the power of the regen motors themselves. Like, say, I'll start at three. Want to try high? That's a great crawl. Want to try high regen? Yeah, let's go to high regen. That was high just holding regen. us at four miles per right. hour. Regen high. Back to cameras. You might just stop us on like so start at three. And I don't know if we've really discussed four. this yet in this video, but the response of the main tablet in terms of the touch screen is really fast. It's iPad right. fast. Yeah. It, it's it's like it's as fast as your phone. There's no delays. And when you see this type of tablet. We'll go the other side. Yeah. Does it make it harder on yourself? No, no, no. This side seems harder. I think we tip into that. Oh, good point. Okay, left side. It just rever like rever doing anything is so easy because of the electric motors. Yeah. It wasn't like rev up, rev up and slip the clutch or add the gas to go backwards. It just moves backwards. What it it kind of solidifies that thing. Whatever you want, this truck will do it. And it just with the electric motors up oh, there. Ah, <laughs> there you go. It just never seems like you're abusing anything. Yeah, it doesn't. You know? All right, I'm well, on the brakes a little bit. Okay. If I come off the brakes, oh, yeah, yeah well, we speed it doesn't. Up and this is pretty steep. Yeah. Da da da. Oh, yeah. Ha <laughs> ha! I think down might be harder than up, just more challenging. Yeah, it's uh. I would straddle this middle here. Just go right down the center? Right down the center. Over that rocky bit as well, or yeah. you move right. I think moving right's the easy way. Yeah, I think you're. I think you're fine going down the center. We'll find out. So if I come off the brake, two, three, four, 
Yeah, it's not. It's not the same as a hill descent control, it's but it's. It helps a lot, though. I mean, I don't know what the approach is, but that's pretty good. Approach departure angles. I'll find the. I'll find the data and put it in the lower third here. There's a big hole right there. I mean, I really like the silence. You know, when I drove that F-150 hybrid on our uh, off-road trip through like Death Valley, mm -hmm. going down the hill, the engine would cut off, it would charge the battery, and then I could just kind of hear the environment and hear the rocks moving under the wheels. It was just a nice, a nice experience. I don't think the, see the one thing about this camera is so it, it is very helpful, but it doesn't really have the dynamic range to give you all the textures of the surfaces. You know, it yeah. can't, it doesn't pick up all the little shadows and nooks and crannies that indicate steep hole. Yeah, know? it's like if you look here, let's say there's a hundred rocks. If you look at the camera, there's 13. Yeah. It helps, lagging. it helps, but it's not everything. Right. Well, that's a big hole. That's a big hole. Yeah. Go this way a little yeah. bit. Yeah, uh-huh. Straight, yes. <laughs> in the hole in the hole yeah EV off-roading is cool it it'd be interesting cool. to go to Moab in like 15 years and you'll just hear a lot less engine noise um, instead of like oh V6 and inline 6 over there and someone with a V8 swap something and it'll just be a quieter place to be It's such. It's, it's, it's just it makes easy, it, man. It makes it so not just easy because because there's a lot of vehicles that can make it easy. You know, a Range Rover makes off-roading pretty easy too, but pleasant. You're clear of that big boulder. Let's see where. Center our center tunnel angle. Center tunnel. It's a bunch. Are we on our highest? Fine. We're not on highest, are we? No, no we're at regular high. So regular the ride, high. The ride is good. And this, again, just like on the road, where the steering rack speed is really nice and makes it easy to slice and dice the canyons, like, it's just really accurate here. And you know, unlike unlike a Wrangler, which has terrible on center steering and you know right. that terrible ball steering, right? This feels like a good rack and pinion. It doesn't feel like too big either. You know, it feels. On the trail, it feels like about the same size as an LR4 or the G-Wagon or, you know, a, a sort of medium boxy SUV. When they yeah. come out with the SUV of this, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Like, this... I don't need a pickup truck for anything, but from the back seats forward, this thing rules. Yeah, I, I'm really into this. I mean, I've, I've tried to, like, withhold judgment till we finish today. But my first impressions yesterday on the canyons were really good. Yeah. And now, I mean, if I had... I no idea what's on this side. <laughs> oh, yeah, it, it looks crazier than it is. Uh, okay. <laughs> I think. Yeah, whatever, we're here now. Oh, we, yeah, we, no, it's fine. I mean, if it's you fine. have the right, you know, if you have a charger at home, <laughs> I mean, this is so nice. It's so many things, and it looks nice. And this screen makes any other like lesser you know media system seem like a dinosaur like a game boy or something like we had, whatever press car we had the q60 earlier this week yeah which was like oh you'd hit a button and wait two seconds or the new subaru outback was like that and you go yeah you learn to live with it and then you use something like this where as your finger moves it's changing the thing you want to change like yeah. that's how we want it to be and tesla's screen is pretty good but this one is better this is faster um it's really well thought out. It's obvious that this team learned a lot from Tesla and in some case sort of copied things that Tesla did that were successful. Mm -hmm. And it was like like it's it's just a it's just a better version of all of that it's, stuff. It's kind of like Tesla version 2.0. Yeah, it's like all right, let's 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 look at that and then improve on the things that they didn't do well. Right. And keep the things that they did well. Uh, and, and and oh by the way, let's really focus on building. I mean, there's Build no really this good. thing for being as for being as early production as it is, and it's pretty low production within the first thousand vehicles. There's no rattles. 
There's no fitment or fit and finish issues. I mean, the stitching on here yeah. follows the contour of the dash perfectly, which it's is not really, true of all cars. Even some cars that are very expensive. It's really nice. Yeah, it's the really materials uh, and the way they're put together is very, very nice and tight. It, it feels like it was built by a company that has built, been building cars yeah. for a lot longer than, you know, a year. But it... it it's kind of like it's taken the agility of a startup, which Tesla had. Tesla had the ability to look at the established OEMs and go, well, we don't think a lot of this works. Let's do something new. And it's easier to, to build the new boat than to steer the old boat. And they did that successfully. And then I think Rivian went, okay, well, what are the things we'd like to change about Tesla and learn from them and learn from the mm -hmm. established OEMs and off-road off vehicles, et cetera. And then be, again, they're so nimble. They have experience, but they're also nimble. Yeah. And they were able to like start with a clean slate. The brake modulation in this is really nice. I don't feel that shelf when you, when you, when you change from using regen force to mm -hmm. actual brake caliper. Uh, it's really even and linear. The brakes, it should be noted, are not that great in the canyons. They're okay for a few stops, but it's not like they are the kind of brakes that you get in a in a Cayenne Turbo S or right. an X5M, where it's really designed to handle some laps of a racetrack. Uh, at, at speed on the road, this thing does lean on that regen pretty heavily, and if you look at the brakes themselves, and consider that they're for stopping a 7,000 plus pound vehicle, they look small. They do, you know, especially uh, with 22 inch wheels. Yeah, um, but but the Regen does a lot of the heavy lifting, literally uh, the heavy lifting there. And um, and so they, they don't completely catch on fire and melt, yeah. but they're just not, they're not that impressive. If When you're going fast, the brakes are kind of the weak point um, as opposed to the power or the handling. Yeah, um, if for any reason the regen stopped working, you would have to adjust your braking distance significantly. So here's the big hole right. going down. Now let's just go to, should we go to high here? So Probably, we, let's wow. Let's go to highest. <laughs> this looks so gnarly from the top. Yeah, well, we went up it. And we did, we can go uh, down and just hug left, I think, yeah. Yeah, I would, I would hug left and uh, How much uh, left can I go? I don't know, back to the let's cameras. The cameras. I'm pretty much to the edge of the left there. Yeah, I don't, well, let's go. <laughs> it is pretty sketchy. It is. Yeah. Okay, well. How's our, is our left wheel on the ground? Left wheel's still on the ground. Yeah. It doesn't feel like it. <laughs> it does not feel like it. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, I wanted to say, shout out to Dan Edmonds of Car and Driver. He did a wheel articulation test. Oh. Oh, and found oh. that it actually has the best articulation in high instead of highest, oh. which goes back to that pressure in the air spring. Uh -huh. With oh, too much pressure, it rotates the body sooner. Yeah, Dan Edmonds, he knows his stuff. He knows his stuff. He used that was actually. I mean, other it, it's a little intimidating and sketchy, but it but but fundamentally not that difficult. Yeah. If you had a spotter there, if I had gotten out and spotted, that would have been a no brainer. That yeah, would, and yeah. it felt it felt fairly gripped up. There's a little yeah. bit of kind of scrubbing happening, but again, that's these are all season tires, not yeah. four by four 22s, tires. Twenty twos, dude. Yeah. <laughs> all right, should we Pretty go all good. the way out and yeah, turn around? Yeah, we're right. gonna have to. We can't turn around down here. We do an eighty point turn. Yeah. And are we still in high or highest? No, we're in high. Okay. Uh, I think. Oh, we went to highest. Yep. Back to. Oh, the camera. The camera has overheated. Um, this is a really, really impressive, uh, well-rounded truck. I mean, on the one hand, it's ninety-one thousand dollars, so it better be good. Right. Right. On the other hand, a G wagon is $135,000 and it's not as good to drive on the road. Uh, a Range Rover uh, is equally expensive, you know, but it doesn't have as many trick features like mm -hmm. the compressor and the gear tunnel and all that kind of stuff. And the M multimedia is nowhere near as good yeah. than a Range Rover. Very true. Um, and the sporty SUVs can't do the rock crawling. Right. This thing is really a truck it is a, it's a one truck solution. You can actually go to the canyons and have a decent time. And have a really time. fun time. You can have a luxury car for everyday use. 
You can have a utility vehicle if you need to tow or haul something a short distance. Well, and it's like a good activity vehicle because of you know gear tunnel, the bike lock thing, right. the plugs in the back. Like it, it really combines the best things of like new pickup trucks, Tesla stuff, yeah. sports cars. I mean, it really married them in a way that is shocking. Right, and so to go back to our original questions in this video, how does it compare to the other luxury, oh, we need to move for this guy. How does it compare to the other uh, luxury EVs? Well, it's much better built than any Tesla I've been in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it feels like less of a concept car and more like a finished vehicle than the Lucid Air, which the Lucid Air is very cool. But that's a luxury sedan. It's $170,000. And know. it does two things. It, it right. transports you quietly in luxury, and it's fairly sporty as a sports sedan. Right. It has a lot of range. Oh, right. It, it so. has no utility beyond, you know, road use. This right. this has some off-road use. I mean, a lot, a lot of off-road use, for sure. Um, and that sort of high-concept thing that you get with a Lucid. Mm -hmm. um, and it's way better built um, than a Tesla. Um, Taycons are different. The Taycon is the Porsche of EVs. It's it's for it, the handling, and it feels like a Porsche. Absolutely. From it from a mainstream vehicle, you know, manufacturer. Yeah. Um, should you buy one? Is it worth ninety one thousand dollars? Yeah. Definitely. I think. Yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. I mean, you'd have to, you'd have, you could pay ninety one thousand to get either of the things it does. Yeah. A fast road car or a good utility. Like car. the price hike they did sucks, but I think the good thing is that if. If you can afford to buy one with the new pricing, you will be happy with your purchase. Right. Are you saving the world by buying one? No. <laughs> this is a toy for rich people. And it, it is very heavy. It has enormous battery. It's full of lithium. Mm -hmm. It's got enormous... If this thing had 400 less horsepower, it would be totally fine. Like... <laughs> it would be just as... It would be almost as good. It just wouldn't have the, the bragging rights for drag racing. Right. But if you don't need that, which most people don't, it would be a really great tr uh, truck. And not that everyone who buys one believes that they're saving the world, but Rivian subtly, with their vegan leather and their reclaimed wood and these earth tone colors and the Tweety Bird door lock sound, they don't come out and say we're saving the world, but they try to imply it. Just like Tesla technically doesn't say their cars will drive themselves, but they do everything they can to tacitly imply it. It's the same thing. They're mm -hmm. implying an ecological benefit, you know, that's not really there. This is a heavy, fast, powerful, and in some ways wasteful luxury toy. As long as you understand that, it's good at the things that it does. Yeah, I think the argument is like, is it as wasteful as a G-Wagon or a, a Range Rover SVR? It's like, well, if, you know, that, that's, if that's the benchmark, then maybe it's greener than those, but it's right. not as green as it could be. That's not, a, in my opinion, that's not a great benchmark. That's no, I agree, <laughs> but I think, I, I feel like that's where it's coming from. Sure. It's, is it probably more ecological than the most wasteful passenger vehicles that we buy? <laughs> sure. Is it more ecological than the best passenger vehicles that we make? No, no, certainly not. But that doesn't mean it's not a nice product, and it doesn't mean that you shouldn't buy one if it suits your and your family's needs. Yep. Overall, it's a, it's a very high-quality thing that we've had a very good experience with, and so as long as you look at it from a balanced perspective, that's what's really important. So thank you to Rivian uh, for letting us have this thing for the week. It works. Um, very well. Check your Bluetooth. Besides that, it's pretty good. And uh, thanks to you guys for watching. What is a much longer than normal video. I hope you've enjoyed it. See you later. And remember, always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the Off The Record app available in the Android and iOS store or go to offtherecord.com TST.